Hi guys and welcome along to this video series on XO by XLN Audio. My name is Larry Holcomb, AK Get to Know, and I'm here to deliver this video series for you with Groove 3. Now, XLN Audio have dropped a really interesting plugin in the form of XO. And at its core, it's essentially a drum programming environment, and it gives you access to a really novel way of visualizing your sample library and also the factory sounds that come bundled with the plugin. And it organizes sounds by their similarity, which is really, really useful. And you can then use this kind of constellation approach, they call it space, to kind of visualize, as I said, and audition your sounds and create novel kind of bespoke beats using those sounds. So it's a really, really kind of innovative way of dealing with samples. And we're gonna be going through all the features of this plugin as the video series develops. Now in the first video, we're gonna just talk about the interface. So from the start, we're fully aware of kind of where everything is and how it's organized. So let's dive right in. Now, first of all, we have this top menu bar here or the kind of header at the top of the window here. And we have some information about the plugin from here. We then have the ability to flick between the two main views, which is the space view, where we can go through and audition our sounds and drag sounds into the slots that we have. There are eight slots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that allow us to create beats. Now, from this main window, we have a lot of the functionality that we're going to be using, but buried in the edit menu, we have some of the, I guess, more advanced kind of sound design aspects of your sample manipulation, things like pitch and tone here, filter cutoff, et cetera. We're going to be going through all these as the series develops. We have some other options kind of hidden here as well, the beat combiner and the sample combiner that we're going to be talking about later. So there's loads of stuff packed into this edit window here as well. So we can close down this sample combiner by clicking on this little button here. Now heading back to the space menu, we have some other options here. We have a shortlist option for favoriting sounds here, the ability to zoom in and out as well from here. And we have the similarity option, which allows you to quickly audition similar sounds for each one of your slots. Alternatively, we can do that globally as well. Now down here, we have an output section and a little level display here for the output too. Now, obviously within the space window here, we also have our eight slots here. You can see they illuminate as I go across them. We have some basic kind of mix of functionality here, like mute and solo, and a level control here as well. We're gonna be going through this later on. Now heading back up to the top menu, we have some playback functionality here, and we can choose to other playback from within the plugin itself. Alternatively, we can use the host sync here as well. So that means that we're gonna be playing back using the space bar as it is in Logic or however your DAW essentially plays audio or plays the transport, I should say. Now we have our preset menu up here so we can go through and actually choose different presets from here. Let's have a listen to a few of them. So really good quality sounds in here. Now, at the moment, we're basically flicking to different BPMs and the tempo is denoted in this little column here. But if we switch onto host sync, we can actually play back these sounds at the host BPM. You can hear that without host sync on, it's actually playing back at its default tempo. Now we're gonna come on and look at the presets in more detail later. Now to load presets, we can either click on here, alternatively, we can click on the load button here. And we can also save presets here as well. So if we were to amend this and change the samples, then we can actually go through and save this. Now from this menu here, we can actually export the samples that are being used. We have the ability as well from here to actually filter in different ways. So for example, we could just filter only kicks or snares or cymbals, and so on and so forth. We also have the ability here to be able to add in our own content, which we're gonna go through later, because that's a big part of the workflow of this plugin is to be able to kind of organize your own samples to kind of integrate within the workflow. Then we have a drop down menu here that gives us access to things like the manual and also some of the settings. Okay, so that's the interface covered at a basic level. So I just wanted to show you something before we finish up for this video, and that is using the plugin multi-output mode. So you have to refer to your own DAW in terms of how it deals with multi outputs. So I'll just show you for logic. Now, I've made a multi output instance of this. If I click on make two outputs here using a plus button, we now have two separate outputs. Now, if we come to the edit menu, we can actually choose where we want these sounds to be rooted. So at the moment, this is going to the master. I could choose bus 
one for example here and let's say we did bus two for the snare so we've got a kick and a snare now and now if i go in and play this beat we have the kick drum and the snare drum being routed to two different outputs so that way we can actually separate out all of our beats so we have the ability to maintain control within our DAW to mix each element separately, which is really useful. Okay, so in this video, we've covered the interface and just how to use a plugin in multi-output mode. So remember, we have the top kind of header up here or toolbar, and it gives us access to our two main views space, which is where we can see this constellation of samples, which show the factory library and also any libraries that we're going to bring in. I'm going to go through that later. We also have our eight slots here where we can load in different sounds. We've got some basic mixer functionality as well. We also have the output section here too. And also when we choose a sound, you see we have some options here like similarity and the shortlist option here too. And when we come to the edit menu, we have a lot of functionality kind of buried within this menu. Some of the parameters that allow us to tweak the tone of each individual drum sound. And also, as we know, set our different outputs here from the playback section. So there's lots of stuff we're going to go through within this edit menu. We then have our playback transport kind of controls here and we can either play from within the plugin itself. Let's take that off solo. Or alternatively, we can use the button here to use the host transport. We can also choose to sync to host tempo as well. So when we're playing back our presets, we can actually audition them at the right tempo. If we switch that off, it will actually audition them at the tempo that they were originally created at. Now, our preset menu is from here, allowing us to go through and try out some of the factory presets that come with the plugin. And we can use this load button to load these in as well. And we can save presets using the save button. And then we have a export option here to export samples out. We then have a filter here to allow us to filter our search when we're in the space view here. We also have the ability to add in our own folders of samples using this option here. And finally, we have this menu here that allows us to access some options on the web and also some of the settings for the plugin. And don't forget, obviously we went through the multi-output options there, which we can route within the playback column here within the edit page. Okay, so now we've covered the interface at a basic level and using the plugin in multi-output mode. In the next video, we're gonna go through how to load samples in, choose samples, and try out similar samples within this space view. So I'll see you then, thanks a lot for watching.